Hey nerds, Todd Simmons here, coming back at you with a little Toddomation. Uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, Meraki. Still going to stay with the wireless that we've been doing. Um, but wanted to, uh, you know, kind of maybe start some things uh, with Meraki as it's, you know, gaining popularity. So uh, let's talk about how to use Python with Meraki APIs. So, um, first of all, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need access to the Meraki dashboard. Uh, kind of important there. Uh, and then uh, whatever access privileges you have, you'll need to be able to create an API key. We need to make sure that the organization that we're going to work with has APIs enabled. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, some sort of IDE with Python enabled. Um, I'll be using VS Code. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, the first thing I want to show you how to do is, is enable API access. Uh, and then after we enable the API access, uh, I'm going to show you specifically how to add the API key. Uh, then we're going to secure it uh, just because I've deleted all my API keys and I have to do it again anyway. Uh, so we're going to log into the Meraki dashboard, which I've already done here. Let me just make this a little smaller. Uh, once you log in, you'll be in your organization. So just check, check your organization. Mine's Totomation. The default network is Get Totomated. Uh, so when we go into the organization down here, we just go into the settings. Once we're in settings, we're just going to scroll down. And if this is a default organization, uh, this will not be enabled. So we want this dashboard API access right here. Okay, so we're going to turn on the API access by clicking that checkbox next to enable access to the Cisco Meraki dashboard API. And then we're going to save those changes. Now, you'll notice that it tells you, you know, you got to check your profile right here. Uh, you don't actually have to click that one. You can. That's just a shortcut link. Uh, to your profile. So when you go to your profile up here, you just hit the down arrow to the right of it and then click on my profile so you can still get there. Uh, if you do not have an API key, uh, you'll see that this section will be blank where it says API access. And I, I purposely uh, deleted my API keys. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to generate a new API key. Uh, there's my API key. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'm going to delete this right after this video is done, uh, but we're going to copy that API key. Now that it's copied, uh, before you can get off the screen, you have to validate that you stored uh, your new API key. So let's just copy it one more time uh, and then done. And that's it. That's all we have to do to uh, allow your instance or your organization in the Meraki dashboard um, to uh, be controlled by APIs. So the next thing that I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to secure the API key. Uh, we do this with the variables. So uh, I have another video. I'm going to link it to here that will take you through this um, uh, more detail uh, or slower, quite frankly. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and secure it here real quick. This is me logging in and it allowing me. Um, so I'm going to go to environment variables. Here's my Meraki API key. Uh, I'm going to edit that API key. I'm going to put my new API key in there. I'm going to say OK. Let me just copy this name so I don't have to type it in my Python. OK and OK. So that's it. I've now secured my API key. Um, I'm going to minimize the Meraki dashboard over here a little bit uh, just so we can keep it there because I want to show you what it's going to do. Okay. Uh, in Python, so I've got my uh, VS Code up here, uh, and you'll see in Python, um, I already have a basic script written. I am going to put that on my GitHub, so I'll link to my GitHub. Uh, just uh, my GitHub is Todd H. Simmons. Uh, but uh, once you get started uh, in your Python, uh, a couple of things you're going to need to import. You're going to need to import OS. That's because we're going to use uh, the Meraki key, API key securely. Uh, I like to import pprint just because there's some dictionary stuff that we're going to print. Uh, and I like printing dictionaries uh, using pprint. And then this is real important. This import Meraki. So Meraki has an excellent Python package that we can use. Um, you can still use requests if you want to, uh, but boy, this Python package I recommend 
uh, from Cisco Meraki to uh, work with their API calls. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, is this API key. We're going to have to send the API key whenever we do this. Uh, so I'm just going to do a control V because I've called it um, Meraki API key. And that's actually going to be the uh, system command that we have to type in there. And let me just go back to the previous slide that uh, shows the exact command that we're going to type in there. So it's going to be uh, os.environ.get. And this is what's going to go look for my key or my variable. Uh, a couple other things that we have in here. Um, I've got an org name, which my org name is Tautomation. And I've got a network name. And this is just get automated. So this is just variables that I'm going to use to kind of show you, uh, you know, the things that you can do. Um, when we go to uh, actually connect to the Meraki dashboard, uh, we're going to use this Meraki.dashboard API, uh, and then we're going to send our API key through. So this dashboard equals actually is creating that connection itself. Uh, it doesn't do anything until we we we. We tell it to do something specific with uh, for an API. Uh, notice I've got it in here twice, and, I, and I'm going to show you uh, the two different ways that you can do this. So the first way is just this API key uh, without putting anything else. So I am going to comment out this second line. Uh, the reason that I'm coming out that second line is by default, uh, Meraki logs, I mean really logs, everything that it did, which is nice. Uh, but it creates a text file in your uh, PWD, so your current working directory, wherever you are. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dashboard method here uh, that I've created, uh, and I want to get the organization information. So when this says organizations dot get organizations, and it's a uh, it's a method, so it's got the um, parentheses. That's going to get the organizations based on this API key. Okay, so it's going to return all organizations uh, when you run this particular command. So uh, the output is going to be orgs, uh, which is going to be JSON. Uh, it's an API. But then I'm going to print that just so you can see that. Uh, so understand that when we do get organizations, this get organizations is going to get all the organizations that your API key has access to. So if you're an admin for four organizations, it's going to return four organizations. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run this real quick. Notice I've got a bunch of other code in here. I'm going to explain it to you, uh, but it's all commented out. So let's bring this up just so we can see the output. And here it goes. So here's our output. Um, oh, we got an invalid API key. Okay, so the reason that it gave me an invalid API key is because it's using the key that I just, it's not using the key that I just replaced in that variable. When you load VS Code uh, and you have variables like this assigned to it, uh, that's when it loads those variables. So I need to close my VS Code here real fast. And then I'm going to open it back up. And let's just rerun that code. And there it goes. So uh, when, when you're using variables, uh, which is recommended when you write code, that way, you know, if you're, nobody else can actually see your API key. Um, when, if you change the variables, you create the variable, you need to close your VS code and then reopen it uh, and that'll work. So here is all of the organizations that I have access to. So notice that the one that I'm going to be most interested in is this one right here. Okay, so this is my um, automation. So this is the organization that I'm going to want to use. So there's some information in here that's interesting. First of all, it's going to be this ID number right here. So that's my organization ID. So whenever you want to do anything inside this organization, you're going to have to use that org ID. Uh, I'm going to show you a different way, two different ways to actually get that org ID. So let's go back over here uh, to uh, Meraki. So inside Meraki over here, if I go to organization, I'm going to go to organization settings. Okay. 
That's where I'm here. If you'll scroll all the way down, you'll see your organization ID is always going to be listed here as well. So you'll notice that that ID matches this ID. Okay, so very important uh, when you're working with Meraki to understand uh, your org ID. Okay, so let's, uh, let, let's make it a little easier to get that org ID. So I already know my organization name. So my organization name is Totomation. So let's uncomment a line. Actually, you know, I take that back. Before I do that, um, notice that when I ran that command, or I ran that API, it immediately started creating these log files over here. So it tells you everything that you did and creates those log files. So these are great when you're debugging uh, or when you're having an issue, uh, troubleshooting you know, your API connectivity or what's going on. Uh, these are great. When you're doing it on a regular basis, at least me, I don't like to have all those files get created. Um, so what I do is I turn off the logging. So I'm going to comment this line out. I'm going to uncomment this line to where I have the suppressed logging equals true. So let's expand this out. I'm going to delete these two logs. And I'm going to run just the same one again to where the only thing it's going to do is print out uh, the JSON that it received from the dashboard of all the organizations that my API key has. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. And there it is. And notice it did not create any files that particular time. So if you're having an issue, uh, definitely. Uh, do not suppress the logging, uh, but for the rest of this video, I'm going to keep the logging suppressed. Uh, so it's important to understand um, what data you need to move on. So I'm going to comment out printing the orgs, as we don't need that now. Let's say you have a specific organization that you're working on and you just want to get that org ID. Okay, so that's what I want to show you next. So. Uh, we can do a, a very easy for loop that just says for entry in orgs, if the entry name equals that org name, and this is the org name that we're specifying here, the organization ID is going to be uh, the key, the value for the key marked ID. Okay, so then I'm going to print my org ID with this. So instead of printing everything out, I'm just going to print my org ID. More importantly, I'm assigning a variable uh, to that organization ID because I'm going to need that later. So let's just run this. And there's my same org ID. So now there's a couple of ways I showed you to be able to get your organization ID. Very, very important. Once you want to make a change to this organization, you have to have that org ID to get started. Okay, so uh, let's not print this out. Let's move on to the next part. Uh, now we want to talk about the network. So you've got an organization, and inside that organization, you have individual networks. So we've already seen mine. Uh, my organization is Totomation. So the network in there is Get Totomated. So I want to look at the networks themselves. So I'm going to uncomment these two lines of code. And notice it's just going to assign the variable networks. Uh, and it's going to return from json.organization, get organizational networks. Now, these match up. If you want to use requests instead of uh, the Meraki package, uh, you, you can. You just, you know, you'll, you'll have to write out the specific HTTPS uh, or HTTP uh, for each of the API calls. But they fall under the kind of the, the, the same category. Uh, but the, the Meraki package is just much easier. So now I've got that organization ID, and using that organization I, ID, I can return the networks associated with that. Uh, so let's just pprint those networks. There's only one in here, uh, but it, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and let's run it. And uh, just moved into a new place, um, and uh, the we, we don't have internet here, so I'm, I'm using the hotspot on my phone. Uh, so it does take a little bit longer than normal. So don't think that these... Uh, APIs are that slow. It's quite frankly, it's the hotspot coming off my iPhone right now. So let's just go ahead and run this one. And there it goes. So as you can see, uh, it returns. Uh, it's JSON. It's a list uh, of the networks. The lists are in a network. Uh, but of course, the uh, 
the network is all uh, JSON, so it's returning this JSON information uh, as we can use as a dictionary, you know, in, in Python makes it real simple. Uh, so here's some interesting stuff. Here's that network ID, going to be very, very important. If you want to add devices to the network, you're actually going to use that network ID. Uh, so these are all UUIDs specific to these particular things inside the Meraki dashboard. Um, so if you have this network ID, you don't need the org ID because uh, it's independent. It's a UUID for network specific. Uh, so uh, you can just, we get little things in here, you know, the name, get automated. Obviously, it allows spaces in the name. Uh, there's no notes for it. Uh, it does tell you what organization it's tied to. Uh, the products um, for Meraki, and I'll get into this in another video. If you have one product, it's specific to that product. As soon as you add another product, uh, it becomes a combined network where you can add any type of product that you want to it. Uh, there's no tags for this network, and right now the time zone is set to America, Los Angeles. Uh, and this is the URL uh, to actually get to that particular network. Okay, so this is the information that we pulled out for the particular networks, uh, which is great uh, if we're doing something. So let's say that we, we wanted to add access points or we wanted to add a switch or an appliance uh, to this. Uh, we do not need uh, to pprint the networks, but what we would need is that network ID. So I'm just going to show you another way to get that network ID. Uh, so once again, we're going to run a quick for loop uh, for entry and networks. We're going to look for the entry name to match the network name. Once again, that's this network name up here. Let me close this out so we have more room on the screen. Uh, so that's this network name over here. And, and I'm hard coding this, right? You, you could get this any way that you wanted, whether you're doing it from a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet uh, to get this information. Uh, so, But I'm just going to show you that I can print that network ID out. Uh, let me uncomment that and let's run it again. And here's that same network ID. And as we can see, you know, it matches. So, you know, just some quick ways uh, using variables to, to gather that information uh, because you're going to need the network ID anytime you plan to add or make a change uh, to a particular device, uh, you'll need that network ID. So let's comment that out. All right, and lastly, you know, what I want to show you is what if you want to create a new network, okay? It's actually very, very simple. Uh, I'm going to uncomment all of this um, this organization id I, I left that in there as a, a purposeful so let's say you already knew the organization id and you you didn't want to run the commands uh, to go get that organization id you could statically assign any of these variables okay there's a couple of things that when you create this new network though that you have to have one you must have the organization id it's it's a it's a required setting um, when you put this in here, uh, I'm going to comment this out because I'm assigning that organizational ID here as I go through my loop. Okay, so I, I don't need to statically assign that down here. Uh, the next thing you're going to have to have a name uh, that you're going to create for that uh, new network. I'm going to call this Totemating Memphis. Uh, first weekend here in Memphis. My wife just got into uh, what I like to call med school. It's PA school. Uh, so we're spending a lot of time in Memphis for the next two years. Uh, and then the product types, um, appliance, switch, and camera. I'm going to put those product types in there. I'll cover that uh, in more detail in a, another video. So uh, these are kind of the variables that you have to have. You have to have the product types, you have to have a name, and you have to have the, the organization ID. Uh, so I'm going to uncomment the actual call. So when we look at this, uh, just a standard response, right? I mean, it, you know, it's what we would do if we were doing it uh, in requests. Uh, so, and then we're doing the dashboard, organizations, create organization network. So we're creating a network inside that organization. So the first thing we have to do is tell it what organization it is. Uh, and these have to be listed in these order. It has to have the org ID. It's got to have the name and it's got to have the product types. And, and I use these particular variables because that's just what Meraki has listed as the variable names in their documentation. So it makes it easier. Now, there's a couple other things that you can add uh, to this. Uh, one is tag. So if you want to tag this particular network, um, don't put spaces in tags because it does not like the spaces. Uh, but you, the tags is obviously a list. Uh, so you could add, you know, other things uh, into this tag. I'm putting one item in it, but it's a, it's a list. Uh, you could easily say, um, and that works just fine. 
Uh, next, time zone. You have to have this time zone. If you do not have a time zone, uh, it is not going to accept your, your uh, post uh, when you run this API call. And then notes, you don't have to have notes. It's not required, uh, but this, this time zone is absolutely required uh, and this name is required. Uh, if you don't put product types, uh, I'm not sure what it does, uh, but um, it, it's actually not a requirement uh, now that I think about it. So uh, what this is gonna do is that it's just going to output that as a response. You don't have to do the response uh, the only reason that I'm I'm doing the response is because I you know I want to show you what it looks like uh, when I get that particular response. So now I've got everything that I need. I've got my organization ID. I've got my name. I've got my product types, my tags, my time zone. Very very important. If you don't have that time zone, it kicks it out. Uh, and the time zone has to be um, in this particular format. And, and I'll, I'll probably talk about time zone more in, a, in another video, just because there's there's a lot of options out there, but it gets really picky. It's got to be in in what particular formats you have. Uh, there's actually a uh, wiki page that talks about the formats. Uh, and if you go to the Meraki documentation, it'll give you a link to that page uh, that shows you the way that it's going to accept the uh, time zones. Uh, America, Chicago. I'm not in Chicago, uh, but there's no America, Memphis. Uh, so I just use America, Chicago because it's in the team, same time zone. All right. So uh, we've got everything that we need. Uh, let's go ahead and bring back the Meraki dashboard over here just to show you. So we look uh, here. I'm just going to go organization, just show the overview of the organization real fast. And what this is going to do inside the organization view, it shows you all of your networks. So as you can see, I've got one network right now called uh, Get Space Automated. So let's run this one. And here we go. And that's it. So as you can see, it created it. It assigned it a new. It assigned it a unique network ID. Uh, it's still assigned to the organization uh, because that's the organization ID that I put up there. The product types you can see it's appliance, camera, and switch. Here's its direct URL if you wanted to go to it. Uh, its name, like we talked about, automating Memphis. Its time zone, America, Chicago. Um, enrollment stream, we don't have anything. The tags, here we go. We got Tautomation and we got Memphis as the two tags associated with it. Uh, and then we put the notes. Uh, is bound to config template? I'll get that in later. We're just creating the network right now. Uh, but we, we can do configuration templates to show that information. So uh, here's the code. But let's go over here to our Meraki dashboard now and see if it actually added it. So what I'm going to do is just refresh this page here. And there it is. We've got our Tautomating Memphis, uh, a new network that we created using Python. Here are our tags. The network type, like I told you, as soon as you add more than one device or two devices or more inside the Meraki dashboard, the network type uh, becomes combined. So uh, if I go over here in this network side, if I go down arrow from Get Tautomated, I can see I now have the Tautomated Memphis or Tautomating Memphis network. So I didn't have to touch the GUI uh, once I enabled the organization to allow APIs. And then after I created my own API key, uh, which I will be uh, deleting next. Uh, but notice that at this particular point, we have a new network that's been installed. There's nothing there uh, at this particular point, uh, but it's available. and We could start assigning devices uh, or claiming devices inside the organization and then assigning them uh, to that particular network. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, if you're interested in more Meraki videos or a specific Meraki video, uh, let me know. Any other type of wireless or networking video, uh, definitely know. I appreciate the likes, love the subscribes. Uh, and today being January 1st of 2023, Happy New Year, nerds. Talk to y'all later.